Hello Internet! I am a two-time regional champion, world's quarter-finalist, and I have a degree in psychology as well. I've always been interested in the psychological aspect of playing VGC, of competitive games, so I've put this video together, um, a lot of it from my own personal experience, with quite a few points for you to potentially reflect on yourself. Some do's, some don'ts, uh, about essentially preparing for tournaments and playing in tournaments from a psychological point of view, and hopefully you'll get something out of it. Before we go too far though, let's just look at why psychology is important. Now when I talk about psychology, I am referring to how you mentally approach the game, what your mindset might be going into a tournament, uh, and during a tournament as well. We all know that going into a tournament, we want to feel good, we want to feel confident about ourselves, but with VGC, it is very important because your decisions are key. VGC is a clinical game, it is a turn-based game, and your decisions are vital for how each game plays out. So you really need to make sure that your brain, your mind is in a good point to maximize the efficiency and the accuracy of your decision making. Bad decisions means bad playing. Good decisions means good playing. And potentially the difference between achieving success online and in real life. It is one thing to sit on your favorite comfy seat with you know your favorite drink, with the damage calculator open and win a tournament online and to sit directly opposite another human being that wants to beat you <laughs> in a big hall full of people doing the same thing as well. Lots of things to consider. Now a lot of the work achieving and maintaining a healthy mental approach is done before the tournament starts. So the first half of this video also is going to be just looking at how you would mentally prepare going into a tournament and a little bit about preparing your team before the tournament as well too. My first point going into a tournament is to not want it too much. Now I'm not saying don't be ambitious, don't have good goals, but there's definitely a line between ambition and desperation. If you become desperate, if you want something too much, then you add stress, you add added pressure to yourself that your mind really does not need, and that affects your decision making. You might see successful players win tournaments and then seem complacent afterwards, but that complacency probably comes from more of a relaxed approach to playing the game. That person probably wasn't desperate to win, and that relaxed approach has allowed them better decision making. So a person might have won a tournament because they've made really good decisions, they've made the right moves during a game because they were relaxed and they're relaxed because they're a bit more complacent, because they're not desperate, because they don't want it too much. Don't let Pokemon define you. If you are playing some practice games on the showdown ladder or on the in-game ladder, don't take any wins or losses as a reflection of you as a person. It does sound silly, but it is quite easy to almost take losses personally. You start to question your own abilities you know, and your team as well, and that is not a good place to be. It can get to a point where if you do have a bad run of games, it ruins the rest of your day, you know, outside of Pokemon, outside of everything else. You know, your mood for the rest of the day is not good. And actually, if you're sitting there thinking, oh, you know, I've, I've been in that position as well, it is a lot more common than you would think. It really is. Uh, also on the other side, you know, if you do have a good run of games, obviously, you know, you can potentially feel, you know, very happy for the rest of the day, but that's good as long as you do appreciate that the next time you go back onto the ladder, it might not always be that way, you might have a bad day, you always need to, always need to take things with a pinch of salt. There are more important things in life, this is what I'm talking about, if you do have a bad run of practice games, you know, just take a step back. There are more important things in life. This is not the be all and end all. Your life isn't going to end if, you know, you don't have a good day on showdown or whatever. Any other hobbies to take your mind away from a bad day of Pokemon is a good thing to have. You know, you don't want you don't want the tunnel vision. You don't want the obsession on finding a good team, playing well with VGC. It's not that important, there's always more days and another hobby can take your mind away from it. You know, take your mind somewhere else and uh, potentially salvage your day so it's not ruined from a bad run of games playing Pokemon. Have realistic expectations as well. Now I'm not, you know, I'm not saying don't be confident, obviously you do want to be confident going into a tournament, but 
don't expect to win every tournament you enter. I mean, I don't think anyone, like even the best players in the world, should not expect to win every tournament they enter. They really shouldn't. And if they do, then they're deluded because, because no one wins every tournament. You know, high expectations, unreasonably high expectations, creates unnecessary stress. And again, that affects decision making. I talk about decision making a lot here because again, VGC is very clinical, it's turn based. Decision making is key to playing well with VGC. And if you do set, you know, expectations too high for yourself, if you're thinking, you know, oh, I really should be winning this tournament, if you don't meet it, then that is psychologically damaging. You know, you look to blame yourself. Again, you're blaming yourself. You're thinking, oh, maybe I'm not that good. Or you start to blame the game. You know, oh, I got, I got unlucky in this game. And that's not good either because you're potentially scapegoating things that, you know, you could be reflecting on yourself as well. So obviously be confident going into tournaments, but have realistic expectations. You know, any of the tournaments that I have won, I didn't go into them thinking I'm going to win them. You know, not at all. You just have to go in there with realistic expectations. Anyone who does think I'm going to win this tournament, they're deluded. There's obviously a disconnect between reality and you know their mentality because no one does win every tournament. Don't go into tournaments thinking you're going to win them. Have confidence in your team. Obviously, you do want to be confident in your ability to use a team uh, because knowing the matchups, knowing the flowcharts allows more time for decision making. If you're confident with your team, if you know it inside out, then on Team Preview, you can see, oh look, it's that team. I've played against this sort of thing many times before. Um, you know, maybe you pick the four Pokemon you're going to be taking within 10 seconds, 20 seconds. You can spend the rest of that time um, you know, think about other things that might come up, other potential possibilities. You know, maybe there is one thing on that team that you're not used to playing against, and you can spend the time thinking about that, perhaps. But the more you know your team, the more confident you are in the team, um, the better the decision making. Again, I keep coming back to it because if you're used to it, if you know the flow charts, if you know the matchups, um, then you should be a lot more confident knowing what to do. And if you do know your team very well, if you know your spreads well, you can more accurately understand any potential losses you have. You might know that, okay, you know, that critical hit they got did matter. Or maybe if you did deviate from your flowchart somewhat, you might know, okay, actually, that was my mistake. I, I know the flowchart, I, I deviated from it, and, and that was why I lost the game. So the more you know your team, the more confident you are with the team, uh, the better you can analyze your losses as well. And... It is important to enter each game with the mindset knowing that you can win. Again, not knowing that you will win, you know, like with the last slide, you know, if you go into every game thinking, I am going to win this, that's not healthy, that's not realistic. But it's important to enter every game with the mindset knowing that you have the potential to win. That is the confidence, knowing you have the potential to win. Don't play too much. Now, I'm talking about... Um, you know, practicing, you know, the, the preparation going into a tournament. It is easy if you don't have a good run to get burnt out. Uh, potentially, you know, even if you're not necessarily having a bad run, but if you're just, you know, laddering and laddering and laddering and laddering, it is easy to get burnt out. Um, I mean, I, I sometimes get into the habit, if I spend hours on showdown, of getting into the same habits of making the same moves, you know, leading the same things, making the same moves, you know, making these false flowcharts that that aren't really doing me any good. And when you can see that happening, it's time to take a step back. You know, at that point, you are, you really are playing too much. You do need to take a, a step back to evaluate what's going on, uh, take time for some emotions to settle if you are getting frustrated, and to have a balanced mind. Now. I'm going to talk about this balanced mind uh, in, a, in a few slides time as well, but I'm just going to put it out there that if you imagine on one side, you've got negativity, you've got frustration, you've got anger, you've got, you know, upset that you've, you've been unlucky. And on the other side, you've got um, happiness, you know, positivity, you've got elation that you've maybe um, won against a bad matchup, that kind of thing. 
Um, you don't want to be playing, you don't want your mindset to be really too far at either of those extremes. You need your mind to be balanced somewhere in the middle because if you're too far on the negative side, then you might be dwelling on, you know, things that you shouldn't be. Your mind's going to be elsewhere. You're not going to be making your best decisions. Or if you're on the other side, if you're thinking, oh, wow, you know, that was an amazing win. I made a, a fantastic move there, you know, or whatever. Um, then that's when mistakes can come into the game that you're playing as well. You're going to potentially miss things. Um, you know thinking about other stuff as well so you need to have a balanced mind your mind needs to be neutral you don't want to be too happy you don't want to be too sad you need to be neutral while playing vgc sounds very boring doesn't it um and also just accept that nerves do exist it is a combative situation i did mention this you know comparing real life tournaments to um to online tournaments earlier on in the video but it is a combative situation you are literally sitting in front of another another human that wants to beat you at this game it is combative you know psychologically from a male point of view you know sitting opposite someone like that it is stressing it is distressing so you need to accept that nerves do exist uh, it is natural you know in the short term drink some water get some fresh air uh, talk to your friends between rounds uh, anything to you know distract you from uh, you know from the situation that's going on but really in the long term experience should help your nerves you know stay in check somewhat i mean you know i've been playing this game for a number of years and uh, i honestly i do i do get nervous still but i don't think it's anywhere near as nervous as i used to get going into tournaments thankfully so your motivation for playing can be a factor on your mental state and obviously it is important to keep a healthy mental outlook through the duration of a tournament. So the next few slides I'm going to be looking at, um, maybe your um, motivation, your mentality going into a tournament. So before we do get into the next few slides, I just want to remind you of uh, what I have already been mentioning in this video so far a number of times about playing without emotion, which sounds again very boring doesn't it but uh, like i was saying a few slides back it's about that neutrality it's about that baseline it's about not being too far on the negative and too far on the positive because vgc is a very clinical turn-based game and your focus should be entirely on each game on each move of each game and the next few slides coming up are uh, you know potentially things that can uh, add emotion into your tournament experience so this is why i'm just reiterating this again um a release of emotion i mean i'm not saying you know don't be happy playing the game don't enjoy playing the game i'm not saying that at all i'm saying as far as your decision making goes for each turn of each game you need to play them without emotion because there is no emotion in vgc is it it's clinical you make this move you make that move and then your opponent makes that move and your opponent makes that move and the turn plays itself out no emotions come into that at all uh, so a release of emotion is healthy if you know if you make a good turn if you want to you know pop off as people say or you know celebrate then you know do that if you don't want to keep it inside of you because that's not healthy either um, but do that as long as you know that you can you know get back to your mental baseline again for you know making the, the best decisions that you can do you know like, again i don't want to keep on coming back to it but this scale of negativity positivity if you celebrate yeah oh that was a really good turn you know the game might not be over and you might not be concentrating for the rest of the game because you're thinking about how good that play was because you know it's distracting so you need to find that neutral baseline before uh, before uh, you know things get too out of hand but let's you know have a little look about motivation entering the tournament don't play for the wrong reasons. Don't play for the prizes, because they're not that great, are they? <laughs> Don't play for, you know, the community clout, just because you think, oh, you know, if I top cut this tournament, then, you know, I can make a nice little tweet and people are gonna like it and retweet it and, and all the rest of it as well, you know. What's the point, you know? Don't play to be recognized or respected in the community, you know? Don't play thinking, you know, ooh, if I top cut this, I'm going to get my name and team little graphic on the next thing that, you know, whatever website tweets out. You know, it's not it's not a healthy place to be. And I know this is like kind of an issue that goes way beyond VGC of people, you know, the endorphins of, ooh, someone's liked and retweeted my tweet and all the rest of it. 
Um, but it does relate somewhat to VGC because if you're sitting there with all these things on your mind thinking, ooh, the prizes, ooh, the money, ooh, the championship points, potentially, which, you know, is unavoidable, that one. Um, thinking about, ooh, you know, I'm going to be able to make a really nice tweet and, ooh, I'm going to be... I'm going to become somewhat of a known player. So, you know, people are going to learn my name and everything. That's added distractions. They are all natural. I mean, to, to desire, obviously. Those things are all things that we do want. And it is natural to want them. But all of these things add distraction, add pressure, add stress to your decision making. There's, there's uh, maybe a running theme throughout this whole video, isn't there? That the, the absolute key of playing VGC is having a good mindset when you're making your turns, when you're making your moves, when you're making your decisions. Decision making is absolutely key and if you're playing for the wrong reasons, if you're playing because, you know, ooh, I want to be a known player, ooh, I want, you know, the money or ooh, I want, you know, the clout online and all the rest of it, you know, that's just, that's just stuff that adds more pressure. That's just stuff that adds things on top of you know the pressure that you don't need already and uh, you know just thinking from a clearly from a, uh, a purely psychological point of view thinking you know what the best way to get your best performance out of yourself is in a tournament you want the least distractions possible and you don't want to be playing for the wrong reasons don't be intimidated by who you are paired with now this is something that newer players do tend to do because they haven't quite realised yet that VGC is a lot more of a level playing field than uh, other sports and uh, other esports. You know, for example, if I turn up to a chess tournament or a Smash Brothers tournament, you know, I know the fundamentals, I know how to play the games, I know the equivalent of the type chart, that kind of thing, but there is not a chance I'm beating someone who is experienced at that game. With VGC it's different though, you know, anyone can pick up uh, a good lead, anyone can get critical hits, you know, burn status, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, it's a lot more of a level playing field, although, of course, you would expect the more experienced player to win. There's always a chance that the least experienced player can win as well. You know, everyone's got six Pokemon on the team, everyone picks four Pokemon to go in with. You know, both players experienced or not pick two moves from both their Pokemon, well, from each of their Pokemon each turn. You know, it's a level playing field. Again, and I, went, I did mention this earlier on in the video, it is important to enter each game with the mindset knowing that you can win. It doesn't matter who you are paired with, it doesn't matter if you're playing against the current world champion, you know, the current, you know, whatever, you can win. Anyone can win in VGC. It's as simple as that. And so on the other side, do not underestimate who you are paired with either. Every game is a level playing field. Anyone can win, anyone can lose. If someone is a little bit less experienced playing VGC, uh, maybe they are using Pokemon that look quite meta game. Maybe they've got quite a meta looking team, but there might be some surprising moves on there, might be some surprising items on there. So you never really know. You can never assume, especially if you don't know the name. Now, this is this is a bad habit that a lot of people do. You know, I've been guilty of this in the past. You know, hands up. I'm sure everyone has, but not knowing someone does not mean that they don't know what they're doing. You know, maybe years ago when the community was a lot smaller than it is now, assumptions like this could maybe be made, even though that you know it wasn't good to make assumptions like that back then as well. But especially now we've had two years of online events only, there's going to be, you know, some people who definitely know what they're doing, who have been sitting behind, you know, a username online, we don't know what the real names are potentially, that when real life tournaments do start up again, you know, as they are very soon, they're going to come, they're going to surprise people, and they're going to win some games. So definitely do not assume that just because you don't know someone, they don't know what they're doing, you know. It is a bad habit. It is understandable because, you know, we do still have quite a small community, really. And there's a lot of online tournaments. People always take note of the people that, that top cut. You know, people do kind of know each other. People kind of know each other's names still within the community. And if you're paired with someone that you don't know, you don't recognize the name, then, you know, just don't assume that they don't know what they're doing because you never know. And you know what? I have been guilty of this, and I have lost to people like this in the past. I, <laughs> I have. <laughs> Don't dwell on things that are out of your control as well. 
It is unfortunate that some things you just have no control over. The RNG is always going to exist with VGC and if it rolls out of your favor, then you've just got to take it on the chin. You've just got to accept that you had no control over that and move on. Obviously, if you lost to some bad luck, but also you could have played the game better, there's room for analysis there. But I'm talking about unreasonable bad luck here. I'm talking about, you know, if you missed a sleep powder or if you missed a hydro pump, if you missed an origin pulse or whatever, I wouldn't consider that unreasonable bad luck because those are inaccurate moves. You know, if you did miss them, you know, that is your fault for, you know, essentially picking to use those moves when you were building your team. You know, I'm talking about really unreasonable bad luck. Uh, difficult matchup as, as well, obviously. You don't have any control over who you are paired with in the tournament. So if you come across someone that's got, you know, a very convenient counter team to yours, um, you know, there's, there's nothing you can do about that. You can't complain about it, really. You just got to accept it. And remember that over the course of a tournament, you know, maybe um, things will turn around. You know, maybe the next round you'll get matched up with, uh, you know, a favorable matchup. You know, maybe if you got unlucky a few sets back, maybe you will get some luck in your favor, you know, in, in a few rounds time or whatever. You know, usually, usually anyway, during the course of a tournament, luck does even itself out, usually. And so, again, you just have to, unfortunately, accept the frustration as part of the game and move on. Do not dwell on things out of your control. It's as simple as that. Uh, obviously, easier said than done, but um, the more you do it, the more you train your brain to be able to move on from things, uh, the easier it does become. Take the positives where you can as well. So this is basically just the opposite point to the one before. Um, if you did play well in the game, you know, if you did come a come across a, a bad matchup and you played really well, you know, made a really good move to, to win the set or whatever, then, you know, just take a moment to, to think about it and that just reinforces your confidence. Recognize any good luck that you did get. Like I've just been saying, you know, any it does all balance itself out you know if you got unlucky then maybe you're gonna get some luck if you if you did get lucky then maybe just just bear in mind that there might be a round coming potentially where you don't get that luck in your favor or you know you get unlucky uh, but don't get carried away just remember to always focus on each game at a time like i said a little while ago um i, I guess my fundamental point throughout this whole video is you have to take every turn of every game of every set as it comes you have to play neutrally you have to you know have a good mental baseline don't be too excited don't be too depressed you know keep a nice good baseline so you're making neutral moves that you're thinking out really well your decision making is key in vgc but you know it's just a game at the end of the day isn't it you know you always have to keep a healthy perspective and remember to only play as long as you are having fun. So there you go. I mean, this has been my little dip into, um, you know, trying to make a video related to the psychology of of, uh, of VGC, you know, psychology of, of preparing for tournaments, of, of during a tournament. I hope it's something that uh, has been interesting to you. I hope it's entertained you. I hope that you maybe got something out of it. Um, if you did like it, you know, please feel free to, uh, you know, like it and share it and help those endorphins of mine and share it on Twitter, <laughs> like I was mentioning a while ago. But anyway, I hope you've liked it. Thank you very much for watching this and goodbye for now.